Good evening, everybody. Today, today we have a speed review of the, well, I've been told to pronounce this thing as Chaba. I hope I'm not butchering that because I've never tried to pronounce it properly. I just call it a cassava, but apparently it's pronounced Chaba. Before we begin, in the description below, there is going to be a couple of timestamps. There's going to be one 2D spade table, so you can see how this awful spade went. And you can also skip straight to the gameplay where you can see just how awful this tank kind of is. Well, armoured car, but you know what I mean. So if you wish to do that, go into the description below and go there. But without further ado, let's get into the weaponry, armour, mobility, and of course the, the, pen the lack of penetration that this vehicle has. So the Charba is a 1.3 battle rating armoured car and is not very good. I'm going to say that straight off the bat. I don't know if the opening bit kind of gave that away, but... I hope it did, because this thing is awful, to say the least. At least with the L3, you can hide the damn thing in easy spots. But with this thing, you can't, because it's much taller. It looks like someone just took a Daimler and squished it upwards, and then took the tw well, the two-pounder off it and gave it a crap gun. But unfortunately, this thing is not very easy to hide. And yeah, it's not exactly favourable. So let's go over the armour, of course, with it being an armoured car, this is not what I have a problem with, because it's not really meant to be well armoured. So the lower part is just 7mm, so in other words, machine gun fire can go right through this. The upper part is actually the most protected part of the vehicle, with it being around 20mm of effective thickness, which is okay, I mean, it stops machine gun fire, can sometimes stop a crappy French round, but I wouldn't rely on it, to say the least. The upper part is also 13 where the driver's head is, so in other words, if you get hit here, you're probably screwed. The front of the turret is just 10mm thick, in other words, if you run across an M13, you are going to be ripped to pieces. And they can also go through here, so have fun with that. Coming around to the side of the vehicle, we have just 7mm of side armor. You'll even see in the gameplay, a Panzer III's coax actually penetrates and takes out my loader, because this thing has no armor. Yeah. You can see where the flaws of this thing are really coming into effect. Coming around to the rear, and obviously the defenders, we have 7mm of armour, which again, quite poor, but you're not really going to get shot back here, so it's not too much of an issue. And then of course the upper part is 13, where the co-driver sits, although he doesn't function as that, like on the p M40, he's just a, a guy sat in the vehicle. And then of course the side and rear of the turret is 10, with the top being also 7 of course, being an armoured car, this is not what this thing is designed for. It's not meant to be heavily armoured, and that's not my problem with it. If anything, I like little armoured cars like this. My problem comes to the gun. And, I, and we're actually going to skip ahead from the mobility. We'll do that last. So, the gun itself is a 20mm 36M, and it's not great. And, of course, the shell is named Pencil Granata. Again, I am probably butchering these pronunciations, but I can only apologise. As you can see, the penetration is just 34mm of penetration. What that means is, is the only way you're penning a Panzer III is if you get right up in his face and start laying into him. As you can imagine, with just 13mm of effective armour, this isn't exactly ideal especially when his coax can pen your side armour as you're trying to manoeuvre around it. Yeah, and if you look at the angled pen, it's even worse, because this is not a capped shell. It's just pure APHE. Now, over the L333, which I'm also going to mention in this opening bit, it does have slightly, and I mean slightly, higher explosive filler. But trust me, you don't feel it. This vehicle also lacks a stabilizer for the 20mm, so don't expect this thing to be too accurate at low speeds. This thing does not like going around corners really easily, and if you're trying to shoot, good luck with that. So let's go over to the X-Ray and you can actually have a better look. So of course, the mobility is actually pretty solid, with it having a 95 horsepower engine propelling the 5.9 ton vehicle to a top speed of 40 miles an hour forwards and backwards. Obviously, you'll only be hitting these speeds on main roads. Your average off-road speed will be around 20 to 30 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive. 
But the problem is, is of course, as I've mentioned already, the gun. Coming up to the gun though, you have negative 10 degrees of gun depression and 25 degrees of gun elevation. You have a pretty good turret traverse speed as well as a turret elevation speed, and it's pretty okay in that regard. But of course, with it being a four-man crew in such a tight compartment, with the only real benefit being of the commander, because he's sat near the engine, at least he's got some extra protection, it's not exactly ideal. And I find in my experience this vehicle is very vulnerable to both fuel tank detonations and ammo detonations, no matter really how much you carry. So just take full ammo, you're probably dead if you get hit anyway, so just do that. Overall though, this thing is extremely poor for the battle rate of 1.3. To say that the L3, which embarrassingly, to say it's a tankette, actually has better armor in most places than this damn thing. And if you don't believe me, I'll quickly show you. So 14, 14, 14, around the rear it's 8, but yeah, like this, this thing actually has some sloping to it, and obviously if you try and shoot the gun mantlet, it can also bounce a shell on occasion. But this thing also has a better gun. But if it's not much better, but it can actually pen a Panzer three at a decent range. Like, when I say decent, more like 300 meters. But 300 is better than pretty much point blank. So, yeah. I would rather drive the L3 and plus... It's just a more fun vehicle to play. And actually has better gun depression. So there's really no point to play the Chaga, unfortunately. But anyway, let's go to the spade table. Of course, if you want to skip ahead to the gameplay from this point, please feel free to do so. Without further ado, I'm going to jump to the table and you can see how the spade went. See you shortly. And welcome to the spade table. So I've actually changed, because normally there'd be an Italian flag down there, but I figured because it's a, um, a suit, well, kind of like a, it's not a su it's a subtree, so to speak. So I thought I'd just change it just for the once. If you actually prefer me doing that when it comes to the um to the subtree vehicles, do let me know and I'll definitely do it in future. So as you can see, the the battles don't look that impressive, and I'll be honest, it was a pain spading this thing, and that's putting that lightly. Yeah, this this thing was just not great, like. But let's get into it. So I'm only going to talk about the battles that were remotely interesting. So Battle 1, 4, and 5 were the interesting ones. So Battle 1 was 0 air kills, 1 grand kill, 3 assists, 2 caps, and a death. 4086 SL, 1212 RP. Battle 4 was 0 air kills, 2 grand kills, 0 assists, 0 base captures. Did die, 667 SL, because it was a defeat and 1014 RP. And finally, Battle 5, which I believe is the battle you're going to be seeing today, is 0 air kills, 3 ground kills, 0 assists, 1 cap, and of course, die, because I died in every match, 1079 SL, 1016 RP. As you can see, this thing is not exactly beneficial when I can barely scrape 1 to 1 in it, and that's me doing that. Now you can imagine how this thing feels to a new player, but yeah, if you're going to go down the Hungarian tech tree, well, I'd say tech tree, sub tree area, there's a reason why you don't have to research this thing in order to proceed. Ignore it. If you really want to play it, fuck around in custom battles in this thing and you'll probably have some fun. But otherwise, please just leave this thing to rot. It's not worth the pain, and I won't even be grinding the camouflages for it. It was that painful. And normally I'm quite good at camouflage grinding because I actually enjoy it. But I had a lot of fun in the L3 when that thing first came out. This thing? No. Let's put it that way. But anyway, I'm going to head over to the gameplay now. I really hope you enjoy seeing how awful this thing is. And like I said, please do not play this vehicle. And I'll see you all on the next one. This has to be one of the worst vehicles I've ever had to spade in War Thunder. And that's saying something. It's not really the vehicle's fault per se. I mean, it, some of it is the vehicle's fault, but... Yeah, this this thing is crap. There's, there's no sugarcoating it. I know if you've just skipped to the gameplay, that's not exactly the best thing you want to hear, but... 
Unfortunately, you have to hear it from the horse's mouth, and well, the horse's mouth is telling you that this vehicle sucks. Thank you. He made that kind of easy, and I didn't even have to fire the main cannon. I could actually kill some of them with a coax. Let's go around here. Oh, traction. This vehicle does struggle a little bit with traction. That is until you get the new tires, but, you know. Okay. Is he reversing round or Okay, there is a vehicle over there, I think it's a Swedish one. There we go. That's killed some for the main gun. It's rare. Okay, let's start capping. Okay, he's dead. Good. That's the M8 up there, I can hear. At least we can get a cap to our name. As you'll see, if, if you've skipped the spade table as well, like if you've just jumped here from the start of the video, like you'll miss how like poor the actual um I think I hear something um is that friendly? no it can't be um you'll actually miss how hard it's been like actually trying to get footage for this vehicle and yeah it's it's not been easy let's put it that way well, obviously I, I record footage, for those that don't know, until a vehicle is spaded. And then once it's spaded, if I don't have footage, which has never happened before, I then take it out until I get footage that I can actually use. And so far this vehicle's been pushing that, but it's not made it so that I have to go out and fish for footage even more. So that's at least something going for it. It's not been the worst spade I've ever had. I think... What was my worst spade? I don't actually remember. It's been that long, but... I think... <sighs> Which one was it? Because obviously I'd... I think I bunged them, the, the B6Ns all together, and I think the second one was really tough. Because it was basically a a B6N1 without the front gun and a higher BR and then yeah that that wasn't exactly fun okay I don't know if we're gonna be able to get up this because the traction on it I don't have the tires unlocked but I would assume with the tires we might be able to get up this okay no it's got the power glad I got the engine mods then Looks like our team's doing pretty well though, like... It's not going too badly for us. J20 just crashed. I also got the upgraded brakes, so we should be okay to hang on the edge here. I say that, and the brakes are failing us, but, well, that's the joys of wheeled vehicles, unfortunately. They tend to have pretty bad brakes, even if you upgrade them. So I'm going to take a bit of a risk, because obviously there is a chance of me getting shot from the side here. But obviously the T-28 knows he's there, I hope. Are you okay there, buddy? He got it. That's good. Obviously, because we didn't actually penetrate the vehicle there, we didn't get an assist. 
Oh god, there's an AA gun up there. I'm really afraid of that. What seemed to be an AA gun judging by the fire rate. No, it's a Panzer II. We're going to turn away. I'm not fighting a Panzer II. Not in this thing. If I was in a Stuart, sure. If I was in a BT, sure. In this, no way. I'm going to quickly reload a fresh mag as well. Looks like there's a Panzer on the cap. So I should be able to use the mobility and get into position. Might be able to even flank the Panzer from the side by rushing up the hill here. Yeah, we can. Brilliant. Okay, kill the more dangerous one. There we go. Took long enough. Okay, enemy players getting cheeky. I got his machine gun, oh, that's not enough. And he's actually penning us with his machine gun. And we're dead. That was bound to happen. That's the best run I think I'm ever going to get out of this pile of crap. But in conclusion, do not play this vehicle. If an L3 is better than it, you know it's crap.